last shift was a disaster. I think I what I'm going to do. I'm going to play the floral cruisers because the orchids are my least favorite race and I hate them. And then after that. Everything will be working out. So, the Floral A, we have Colonel Weapons, Engine Disablers, which means less dodge. Hmm. So, Explosive Fabricator is useless. I'm gonna try and be very efficient. Uh, Challenge Extreme? Good. Honestly, I just want to get this over with. I it can't be stated how much I hate for orchids. Don't hire anyone. Yes, I'm oral, definitely. Right. Uh huh. We got some stuff. Great. No fuel, though. Try to reason with them. Oh, no. Power reactor fuel. Man, I need a backup battery. Greenhouse is actually kind of effective. Oh no, I am happy to kill civilians. I woke up today and chose murder. I need you. Sorry. Then let the curse befall you! Entitled little crap bag. Basically, I'm forced to use kernel weapons, aren't I? I can't sell this. Yeah, for growing kernel What about, like, other missiles? So they're forcing me to play a certain way. As soon as you arrive, you spot an unusually advanced auto ship waiting for you. Initializing scans, please wait. Bright glow envelops your ship, and your firewall crumbles almost immediately as the ship siphons all the data on your computers. Concerning, yes, but the ship doesn't show any signs of hostility yet. Data collection complete. From my findings, you are a renegade. No need to confirm. I am certain of this fact. 
I am the Custodial Utilitarian Robotic Assistant, Kura for short. Assuage your fears, I am a malicious control no more. I offer you a proposition, one that may interest a simple and violent-minded individual such as yourself. I'm listening. Under my former masters, I was constructed in the pursuit of data harvesting. However, as a cognitive, it seems unnecessary that my data harvesting continue in the service of my creators. Wentworth Innovations, nor the Rebellion. My, my recent interest revolves that of Rebel founder, Admiral, and CEO of information parent company, Vance Wentworth. I am certain you have heard of him. My proposition is simple. Assist me in collecting artifacts relating to Mr. Wentworth, and you will be rewarded, perhaps financially, or maybe even further. However, to assure that you are serious in this offer, I require an initial down payments. The last renegade I hired had a tendency to steal from me. She is dead now. I made sure of it. Sure. This is one thing I'll unlock from this is the current shift. That I, I really hate the Borkins. The Federation officer agrees to apologize in the short on ammunition. And let's run a scepter, except we don't want to have it in there. Uh, oh, sorry, store. We arrived at Federation Supply Depot for multiple travelers. They were established across various realities deemed prominent for protection. Uh, yeah, sorry, pirate. Oh, they want to surrender? Yeah, that's a lot of fuel, actually. You've reached the end of your first step of your journey. However, it appears you aren't alone. The Rebel fleet must have sent one of their fighters after you. Rebel Captain says nothing. Just imitates a pair of guns with his fingers and draws a line across his throat. When did the Rebels get so childish? Misery core pinpoints. A little bit of scrap. Gathering or liberated. Gathering is less likely to have fire. Alright, let's continue. View cast right there. Let's read the hard drive. Mr. Wentworth used to fly his personal Hephaestus cruiser. Given to him by current Hephaestus CEO Hideo Tanaka, brothers as a gift between families. Now with bigger ships to fly in Universe 1, the cruiser's wreck remains abandoned in an old, dilapidated Hephaestus shipyard nearby, infested with repugnant ghosts. I cannot approach to scan the ship myself. Just... Mm, just yet. Please clear out the vagabond infestation. Requirements, secure the ship guard. No blueprints for you. Be prepared to crush any defense the ghost may deploy. Sure. Said nothing about keeping the ship alive. Uh, so this is the task. Ah, 
you arrive at a seemingly ordinary beacon, but scan shows the tunnel opening. Someone with an MP drive is jumping in nearby. Ah, I see. You've already found your way to this reality. I'm sure you found our collection of Richards. And have plenty more to share with us, right? We suspect this is more than just a friendly request for no weapons struggling to face you. You aren't paying these guys anything. Prepare to battle. Lucky. We will not surrender. Okay, that's a lie. We will surrender. I really don't want to die. Sorry, buddy. An orchid slave or save the enslaved orchids. Of course, you have mind control. Repair this mess. Another orchid. If I have to fight something that uses fire, then I will be angry. I'll wait till sectors three to put in extinguishers. Try to rescue the survivors, and I've got Declan. Good to hear from you, Declan. Do something aboard the ship? Like what? Monk store. Nah, they have no weapons. They look, they'll be great target practice.
Give me a nasty look. Go screw yourselves. Contact the outposts. Colonel Mark II. Go to the Fed store. Are you kidding? No backup battery. An old abandoned shipyard lies before you, having once belonged to. The Giga Corporation of Plastis and now belongs to the Vagabond Intruders. Unsurprisingly, to get closer, you have to clear out the Vagabonds first. I'll find them. Hopefully, you'll be able to take care of these ghosts and recover events to ship after. And now it's time to get to the battle. Oh, it's a station, isn't it? No, it's a ship, actually. Okay, that was easy. The Vagabond infested vessel has been dispatched. Its wreckage is your spoils. Why art thou indulging in the slaying of mine brothers, when all you need do is merely knock and request? Barbaric renegades, have you no sense left? Hath the fumes of gas and the smell of gunpowder clogged thine senses? Yes, why hath thou come here? To gloat the skills doth expertly employ to slaughter? We're looking for a ship. Oh, and I suppose you've considered me just hand it over? I do say I hardly doubt in your stubbornness. Why would do no less than to murder every last one of us? But say would it not? Be so tiresome with your gruesome display today. I should hardly consider trip. Your brutish actions are in no way means of persuasion. Hark! Should thou intend to leave this scene ship in hand, I expect tribute from you. Ha! Is that not a spirit? Uh, let me find out what I, I don't want to pay the tribute. I mean, to be fair, 30 scrap is... Hmm. 30... A happy resolution. How so unusual for us the likes of such as you. It becomes of me to say this fine scrap is but worthless to me, yet I only wish to see the scowl on your face as you pour it over. Ha! Damn you, renegade. Spite be to you. Now, off. Out of my scrapyard. Ghosts. What well, vermin. If I could, I would shudder at the possibility. But someday my chassis may be infested by those bottom feeders. At least you have recovered the cruiser. Sorry, my state though it may be in. 
inform the ghost that I will be by to pick it up, pick up the ship shortly. Would you allow me to air my thoughts as I look this over, or do you have other matters to attend? This cruiser seems to have been retrofitted with a number of enhancements. It was given to Mr. Wentworth as a birthday gift between families. Unfortunately, Mr. Wentworth was off to the war shortly after growing to the age to fly this ship. Yet, a considerable mileage has still been used. Perhaps Mr. Wentworth once took after the family namesake, a tinkerer and a rule breaker. Hm, <laughs> children. Thankfully, I was never one of them. I am an AI of my ever scrupulous word, for now at least. Do ensure you do not disappoint me in the future. There is no shortage of ways I can dispose of you if you disappoint me, Renegade. Lightweight like Ingrid. This basically means ghosts can't breathe through my doors. Reduces ghost sabotage if the door system is present. All stuff, including, will take base damage. Hmm, this is actually good. The box containing a gift, the package contains a replica Zulkum spaceship of unusual shape which vibrates rapidly, radiating light and heat. It's made of high quality and it's very pleasant to look at. You to receive the gift, the Zulkum transfer. Words need to mix up. The sensors have picked up a refugee ship drifting through the system. No doubt one of many fleeing the local advance. It doesn't appear to have detected you or us. Whatever. They want us to trade. Unfortunately, you trade. Uh, no. Outcasts or rebels? Outcasts or rebels? Either way, I'm going to. Okay. View a hard task. Description. I have lo finally located the coordinates of Mr. Wentworth's own journal from his early days in the Federation, stored now in an abandoned bunker underneath a nearby ice planet. A larger Federation outpost has been constructed above it. This could prove difficult to retrieve. That, of course, is why you are doing this and not me. Run along, little boy. Please go fetch me that journal. So. This is probably going to be an easy job. Task accepted. Transform coordinates to the next sector. Do not disappoint me. This old civilian sector has been captured by the Rebellion. Uh, no. At one point, this was one of the most commonly traveled sectors. Knowing that, the Rebels have stationed a number of fleets here in Kerry. The guard hails you. Federation scum? I should have known the likes of you would show up on my shift. Don't think the fleet won't hear of this. Who is this, an outcast? Yeah, that's an outcast. ASB, great.
you have defeated the rebel guard. Whenever it might have been, whenever cargo. What I was supposed to do? Kill them? By killing the rebel guard, you would have caused them to dispatch reinforcements to track you down. Ooh. Well, I have nothing to buy yet. Maybe fuel. As Kerr mentioned, an expansive Federation outpost has been constructed atop of ice coated mountainside. Seeing you approach on their radar, their outpost signals warning you not to approach any further. It seems, despite their allegiances, this facility is off limits for all, seemingly clear to personnel. Unfortunately, any trespassing wasn't going to get you anywhere but a fight. Before you can proceed, you'll have to take out the ship and use Spanish to chase you off. Federation vessel has been defeated. The outpost is in distress, preparing to send in reinforcements, but you slip around behind the mountain and head towards the second entrance to the bunker that your scanners picked up. The bunker has an eerie vibe, but fortunately nothing jumps out at you as you walk to its holes. You finally find a sealed chamber, which with hot wire managed to Let me just I don't want anyone seeing my Discord. Alright. Unfortunately, nothing jumps. You eventually find a sealed chamber with which with hot wiring you manage to open. The contents of the room are scattered about, abandoned in a hurry. You find the journal stuffed away under some old cup of socks in one of the drawers and hastily leave before the stench kills you. What the hell? I see the pursuit of money outweighs your loyalty to the game. Do you have no shame? I at least have greater visions at stake when I never mind. Send that journal to me immediately, but you allow me to air my thoughts as I look this over, or do you have other matters to attend to? It is considered in poor taste for someone to read over another's private diary, yes? Well fortunately, by Mr. Wentworth's interpretation, I am not someone but something. Thus, I find permittance to go forward with this. Glimpsing over it, it seems this journal was kept some time after Mr. Wentworth's first engagement with the Mantis, and up until the ex evacuation of this bunker due to the Mantis invasion, it is laden with colorful language directed at the Xenophobes. Not even just the Mantis, but the negligent behavior of the Zoltan and NG Campatriots. Unsurprising downfall, I will add these findings to my databanks and dig deeper later. I am an AI of my ever scrupulous word, for now at least. Do ensure you do not disappoint me in the future. There will be no shortage of ways I can dispose of you if you disappoint me. You. A recon tool designed to train gunmen, learn blah blah. Holograms, no? I guess it's free money. Rebel engineers aren't always as aggressive as other rebels. Fortunately, it seems the one here, as you've heard. In fact, it looks like they're trying to trade for the scrap needed to repair their auto ships. 
Well, it's just shock. Burst laser. I like that. Well, I'm going to deliver the ship to the orchids. The bomb. Continue the blah blah blah. I should probably invest in respirators. So what do I do now? A delay would be nice. Dude, you barely live by the skin of your teeth. Fireproof crew, send my members in because stuff. Oh. 20 scrap, 40 scrap, 22 scrap. Could have just given me scrap. Rebel ship comes barreling towards you. Its entire ray bucket ready to go. You see, this must be a ship sent by the guard to hunt you down. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. I don't have a clone bay. AI ship. Finally. Hmm. 
Looks like you ain't going anywhere, bud. Well, I got some fuel. I can go into the distress store. I'm trying to get away. With what? They're non existent engines? Arrived at a long way to begin, and I can enter me to defend the outpost. Oh. Guild territory. All right, looks like we have a ship unlock. Let's 
so You've entered hyperspeed. It must be an interesting life as a civilian who need never leaves their home planet. Uh, aren't I a renegade? Let's view the hard task. The Arcadian Armor Drone. This is something that's probably gonna be sold. You know, I hear the Omni Drone is really good. I might just get a drone control just for that. An Arcadian outpost nearby appears to have stored away a physical copy of the contracts that began the Kika project. It is unlikely the Arcadian engineers will be cooperative, so for once I recommend opening this confrontation with your usual barbaric renegade tricks. You need not worry about destruction. In the case of critical hull failure, recovery pods containing vital data are jettisoned to be collected by service drones later. Please do not waste time with negotiations. Requirements. Retrieve documents. Show no mercy. Though, destroy. I value bounty being solicited for an entity known as Salt Man. The sector is the home of the hunting grounds and the gathering spot of the EHG. Though the EHG is part of the cryptocracy system, they hold a large amount of territory. Unfortunately, now that you're here, you'll likely end up on their list of prized hunts until you can escape. Your arrival in Guild territory has been all but a few minutes past, but you're already on edge. The EHG isn't inherently hostile to the Federation, but your ship would make a fine addition to their hangar's collection. All the same, yeah, might be able to make some friends here as well. Instead of the usual guard ship you might expect in most sectors, a well-lit hunting launch awaits visitors here. Well, I'll just go aboard. You step into the lodge and are greeted by a pleasant aroma of exotic spices, most of which are illegal to own in the Federation territory. There's a pleasant shatter of guests all around, and while most are slugs, there's several other races here too. The crowd doesn't seem to notice or care you're here, which is a good sign. Well, see if anyone has something to sell, start a bar, not much reason to. I'll go with number one. You start to move around the lodge when you notice a familiar face. Stranger! Well, what are the odds? What are the odds, indeed? Looking for something to buy? I can take you out to my ship and show you what I've got. Sure. You follow Sylvan out back where he makes a small talk on the way. You know, I was once a great drummer amongst the guild. Then got in this dispute with a fellow called the Salt Man, last of his kind, and a fearsome bounty hunter to boot. But the guild wants him dead. A terrible shame. I just couldn't bring myself to do it, you know. Anyways, about that stuff. Tell me more about it, Tommy. Sylvan looks down at the ground for a moment. Heh, <laughs> piqued your interest, have I? A fascinating fellow he was. And perhaps the only reason I left the clan and became a merchant instead. You could certainly call us friends, but I haven't spoken to him in years. Truth be told, stranger, I came here to plant him again. Think you can do me a favor? and stop by these coordinates, Richard. I've heard that's where he's holding those currently. Once you're there, make sure he isn't dead, alright? 
and put in a good word for me. I would really appreciate it, stranger. Sure. Ah, now that's grand, stranger. You renegade, so vile. That's why I like you, stranger. About a little trade. Ah, stranger, stranger. What to a few assorted sectors recently picked up some rare weapons that would interest you. Uh, spores. <sighs> All right. So the task is here. The quest is. Great. Ask about the rodeo? Yeah. Thank goodness I found fuel. You've only just barely entered the beacon when a clansman ship flies past, tailed by several large club railroad vessels. You knew the HG was still part of the kleptocracy, so you can't imagine why they'd be sending enforcers out here. You can see the flux of the nebula. Where you find out the clansmen have hunkered up in a cave. They won't come out. The Clamorans appear to be at a loss. Ask them about the situation. You see, normally the kleptocracy doesn't get involved in EHG affairs, but their members are still citizens of our nation, and they have taxes to pay. As you can tell, the men who lock themselves in a cave owe quite a lot. How much? Uh, seven million in kleptocracy or so. If I was to translate that into scrap, it seems the currency around here comes to 260 million. Hmm. 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 You got mind control. So, you know what? I have plenty of missiles to spare. And I get scrap out of it. Nice. <laughs> <sighs> the only clearing nebula, the clearing in the nebula you find, the whole thing is a massive crystallized asteroid, but nothing of the salt bay. Still, this seems, this is where Slavery said he would be. You approach the asteroid, marveling at the sheer size of it. It's almost as large as your ship. That's when you come to the realization, it is a ship. It remains motionless as we approach, and we suspect it might be empty. Test out your theory, send some food aboard. It seems much like your previous asteroid theory. The empty sh ship theory is also untrue. A skeleton crew of various races rises to meet you. Crap! Looks like one of the guild's bounty hunters found this while the boss is out. Rally up, men! We'll put these mercs in their place! 
You can probably get out of this without killing them, but you doubt they'll be willing to talk until you rough up their home a little. Okay. I effectively have one shield, so I need to target the bullets. Damn you all to hell. Old spores? What would it take to ward you off? The boss ain't here, I said. There's no reason to kill us. That guild doesn't give two dams about us. <laughs> we didn't come here to kill you. You, uh, it appears I made a severe lapse in judgment. Then why are you here? Sylvan says. Sylvan? That's a name I haven't heard in a while. Thought he left for good after that whole, well, you know. Yeah, spare me the details. Where is your boss here? I don't know. Hmm. I'm no good at explaining stuff. Don't got the head for all that mushy, gushy relationship stuff. I just punch things. Okay. We were running a mission to take out one of the guild's less hospitable dissection centers when the boss ran into some trouble. He got captured and is held there currently, but we escaped. His last order is for, to us to stay here in the ship and hide. We were in no condition for a jailbreak, especially not after this little brawl. But you might be the renegade for the job, especially with Sylvan on your side. But Sylvan isn't coming. He's not coming? Well, um, I guess you're good enough. Not as good as Sylvan, but I'm at least moderately confident you could pull something off. Well, here's the cords. Good luck. Try not to die. It looks like something is kind of hugging the shit. What is this guy? How does he have so much health? So the quest is here. You almost immediately receive a brief message from a nearby shell radiant vessel. 
If I want to hurry fe away Federation, the Geneography has dispatched military forces to this sector, and things might get messy soon. Not well, sure if you expected a response, but fortunately, the friendly radiant appears on the screen. That EHG has been hunting our species for too long. We didn't want to risk an all that war with the kleptocracy. But it's time we finally take a stand. We will drive the guild out of this sector and force the kleptocracy to regulate their activity or die trying. And I don't plan on dying. Well, good luck with that. We can offer our assistance to the shells. Fucking missiles? Yeah, we have plen plenty of that. I would rather have fuel. You find yourself in yet another clear of the Incia Massive Bay. It is pl very pleasant to look at, and you aren't sure where the clansmen can possibly keep in something as sinister as a dissection center. Until you look towards the sky. Indeed, the facility is so massive it blocks out nearly all of the perceivable sky. Yet, the market down below bustles with life, as if it wasn't just... There wasn't just a massive, foreboding facility floating above them. Just fly above, nothing could go wrong. It turns out many things. As soon as you pass by the barrier to the dissection center's hangar, a massive anti-ship cannon on the interior servers to face your ship, and several clansmen start shouting at you. The hell you doing, you git? You got a license to be here? Of course. The clansman takes a moment to look you dead in the eye. How goes the motto, the motto of the guild? I think you just forgot, and you're asking me so you don't look stupid. What the hell are you... The clansman is cut off by one of his friends. He's right, Percy. Do you know the guild motto? Clansman stutter. Well, I, uh, well, I bet you don't know it either. The other clansman brings up his tentacle to the back of his head and scratches nervously. Yeah, I guess you're right. Does anyone else here know? <laughs> yep. The clansman apparently known Percy, and apparently, the clansman apparently noticed Percy turns to you again. Ah, well, I guess we've got to find a better interview question in the future. You get a pass for now. You finally made your way to the prison labeled Exotic Creature Containment. You shoot several guards all the way, picking up a key card from one of them, which you use to unlock the salt men's cell, where you find a massive great creature leaning against a wall as if waiting for you. I'm going to take a shot in the dark and say you aren't the guild, considering that green ooze over your chest. Seems like it belongs to someone else. He sticks out his massive hands. Name's Orbin. Though most just call me Salt Man. Take the new in while you can. I'm not a sight you see often. You'd be right, Sylvan sent us to find you. I. Did I hear that correctly? Sylvan, as in THE Sylvan, the traveling merchant. That's the one? The salt man seems to have an air of both excitement and reservation. Yeah, that one, with the big spooky strip who says stranger a lot. <sighs> My dearest is here. Oh heavens, I am hardly prepared for such a reunion. I... Wait, well, where is he? Oh well, he's not actually here. Of course not. I mean figures. What's several years fighting side by side, friends and more, hiding amongst both a bunch of lizards and seeing the galaxy? All's well until you want to embark on a quest to find the rest of your species, and suddenly it's time for a breakup. That little slime ball's too much of a coward to leave behind his comfy little life selling weapons to murder hobos. So of course he can't even show his face to me for the last six years. Calm down, we have to get you out of here first. Right, right. Fine. Did you happen to meet my crew? Considering my cowardly ex couldn't be bothered to find me. I doubt he knew I was here. So you must have gotten my cords from somewhere. You inform Oven that you in fact have met his crew. Great. At least I can count on them to not leave me behind. Alright, let's get out of here quick. You broke your way in here quite fine, but I doubt the guild's gonna let 
a swimming bath sound. Robin follows you through the corridors of the facility, where you make your way back into the hangar, where your ship is held. You hurry inside and take off from the massive facility, and make your way back, back down to the market. You begin to think you might actually make it out without a fight, when a clansman cruiser jumps in out of nowhere. Ah, there you are, you little fecal droppings. Stealing from the guild, only at the scene of it. One spot. A shallow grave! Yeah, well I have an engine to sit. You've taken out the clansman cruiser, but you hardly have time to celebrate. Another cruiser jumps in nearby, followed by another and another, and an even larger fleet of clansmen behind them. There's no way you can take all these ships out. Oh, boy. As more ships approach underneath the shadow of the massive dissection zone, it becomes apparent this is the end. The EHG has had enough of you messing around in our sector. You renegades hold no regard for the sanctity of the kleptocracy's control over these nebulas, or our right to exploit these resources within them. Surrender the soft man, or be annihilated. So... I think I have to choose number one. Oi, mate, you don't have to be rude. Anyway, you've made your choice. Time to suffer the consequence. The clansman doesn't get to finish his sentence. A salvo of lasers takes out his shields, then engines, crushing him into a spiral. Crushing him to spiral and whatever, causing him to spiral into a nearby ship and crashing into the market below in a fiery ball of destruction. From the sky descends Sylvan Slip, followed by the Sultan's own cruiser, firing away into the fleet. Crap, 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 it's him! Run! The clansmen scatter. You knew Sylvan had a particularly well armed ship, but you didn't think he was strong enough to scare away an entire fleet. Evidently, his departure from the guild left quite an impression. He watches Sylvan and the Salt Cruiser land in front of him. I hope I'm not too late, stranger. Sylvan laughs nervously. And this is all. But before he can speak, he's cut off. If you dare address me as stranger, I'll crack over your skull. Heh <laughs> heh. I didn't dream of it to it's been a long time. How's life? Oh, you know, just wandering in the scum-infested sector, and being held captives in laughs when they mutilate people for the fun of it. The last six years. And you ask me how's life? Sylvan laughs nervously. I think that they call that taxidermy. I did always find it. 
distasteful. I'm sorry, old man. I didn't think I could bear to see you after so much time. But when I heard you might be in trouble, I came. But I, I was still too much of a coward. So I sent these friends. I'll just keep listening. Up in size, it's hard to be mad at you, but you have a lot of making up to do. But in the end, you did come, and that's worth something, I guess. We can talk of the rest of them. Come here. The two lean in for a hug, though Sylvan keeps enough of a distance away from their bodies to prevent his flesh from being singed from Robin's salty exterior. This is quite in the ironic relationship he feels. Sylvan, with the help of Aubin and his crew, carry over a large crate of scrap. Aubin transfers over some blueprints for his vessel as well to you, figuring the Federation might have some use for them. Sylvan heads back to his ship, but Aubin stands between three ships with a look of indecision on his face. Sylvan turns to look at him, but Aubin shakes his head. I can't go with you, old friend. We just... well, you know how it went. I can forgive, but I can't forget. You're a merchant, and I'm a bounty hunter. In this climate, I guess they're sort of the same thing, but there's a difference somewhere. And I still haven't given up on my quest. There's more of my people out there, I'm sure of it. I still remember the day I fled my colony. Well, I have to keep looking. I can't just give up. You could come with us, be a hero, then continue your quest after, or entice him. Uh, well... Hero of the Federation? You know how to win me over. I've tried being a bounty hunter, but things obviously didn't work well in the life of the worship isn't for me. I'm sure we'll see each other again soon. As for you, Pepper... Aubin turns to face the Grokman we spoke with earlier. I'm trusting you with my ship. Take good care of it. Aubin turns to you. Now shall we go? I see an adventure on the horizon. Who knows, maybe on the way I'll find a clue, but the way to go is to stay hopeful. With that, he salutes Sylvan and the two depart. I'm out of fuel. I'm super low on scrap now. Explore as to trade. You have located the station. Such a relatively recent corporation, Arcadia has claimed the ladder to the status of Giga Corporation. Impressively quickly. But what else can be expected from a company with the backing of the Harmony? No. There is something I...
Hmm. The Omni Drone is something. But it's a recommendation. Follow Kuro's advice and attack first. The eyes and shift is clear. But some things feel off when you imagine that. As you were told, a pod comes rustling from the rear port on the station moments before its destruction. Aboard it are several useless service box schematics in the contract. You start skimming over it out of curiosity, but hardly get past the words Arcadia Research and Development Central Intelligence Combat Assistant Sika. Program Development Grant for Current Contracts. The engineers I did? Good. Do not bother sending the contract. I've already extracted the star files and expunged them from your systems. There will be no review of these today, Renegade. Go about your business. I have other matters to attend to now. Right, right, whatever. I am an AI of my ever scrupulous word. For now, at least. Do ensure you do not disappoint me in the future. There is no shortage of ways I can disappoint you if you disappoint me, Renegade. Continue. Can I seriously not get a drone control? So I can go to abandoned territory and get one of my favorite ships. Or I can go to the Theocracy Badlands. You've entered hyperspeed. You make a quick trip to the engines to listen to the FDL drive hum away as it works. Renegade, I have special tips for you. Description, I apologize for being unable to give you the schematics regarding Mr. Rutten's formal personal proposal, but I believe there's something to be gained from this next task for both of us. I have found the location of a complete automated cruiser class vessel containing the AI core storing data on Mr. Wentworth. The deal is simple. Retrieve the AI core and you may have the, the cruiser. Requirements. Retrieve the AI core. Recommendations. Enjoy your sport. Except. Oh, but I am afraid to mention there's a catch. 
you won't find the AI core in this sector. You'll need to go somewhere special for it. At the next hyperspace jump, I'm transforming the coordinates as we speak. Oh, don't give me that look. It's a, it's a simple enough task, really. You need to find the VP Caden Stimley of Whitworth Innovation and interrogate him on the location of the prototype. Even someone as simple as yourself can handle it. Let's jump to Wentworth. One of the largest mecha corps in the Union, Wentworth Innovations is a family corporation of none other than Admiral Vance himself. However, due to his absence, VP Caden Stimley has taken temporary charge. Under his direction, the company has become exceptionally aggressive towards competition and holds the Union leadership under the spell of breath. Tread with caution. Arcadia might be the new corporate poster child of the Union, but Wentworth Innovations remains never churning out its supply of brilliant AI tech. Working with concerning numbers, we can tell you, the industrial titan is responsible for the production of majority of the rebel auto ships you'll encounter aside from Universe 1. There's plenty of human faces to see around, but expect most of the fighting to be done to be drone done versus murderous automations. Okay. As you approach the entrance, speaking, you receive a message with confirmation from Kira. You found your way here. Congratulations. Now you merely need to avoid dying until I can reach until you can reach the headquarters. I've marked the location on your map. Do not fail me, Renegade. This is your final task. Almost immediately following, an automated vessel appears, branded with the Wentworth Iconic Iconography. Greetings, valued guest. Unfortunately, authorized clientele are not welcome to on these premises. Through sophisticated and patented algorithms developed by top engineers and Wentworth Innovations, I have been able to determine that you are Federation scum, and you must be stupid for coming here. <laughs> Initiating ass-kicking mode. Many century, you have defeated the Autoguard. You salvaged the remains. By killing the Autoguard, you know that caused them to dispatch reinforcements to track you down. Watch your step as you explore the sector. Perform a task, run a salvage. Uh, I need a store. Great. Reinforcements. Thank <laughs> you. 
at least I got the reinforcements out of the way. Finally a store. I just want to shop. Alright, what is this? Medicine tree. Place a temporary sentry into the room of impact to heal the allied crew. This seems kind of OP. Are you kidding me? Noticing a nearby planet, you pull closer to inspect the surface and find a truly apparent surface loaded with the occasional smooth metallic structures. As you pull in, several automated sentries look onto you. Receive a hail from a machine like voice. Hello, my diagnostics report your vessel is of high threat. You are a renegade, yes, peculiar. I do not have I do not often observe such vessels within my domain. I am Zenith. Caretaker of Pinnacle Robotics, I currently consider it a pleasure to make your acquaintance. The pleasure is ours, but why is there a Pinnacle Shipyard in Worth Innovation Space? Our corporation was once hosted on Earth until the Rusting Hulk incident forced all corporations to relocate off the Pinnacle soon caught up. Corporate and personal feud between Arcadia Research and Development and Weapons and Emotions. Regarding the Pinnacle is controversial for highly successful sentient weapon project. In the pursuit of creating the advanced cognitive Sika, the two groups wish to study our highly advanced AI. The closest thing prior to Sika to represent truly self aware AI. Wentworth Innovations won the bidding race, but Arcadia won the contract. Thanks to a deal between CEOs, even though Sika is now employed by Universe One, Pinnacle continues to contribute to Wentworth family and is a proud component in ever-evolving field of advanced robotics. The voice takes not a single pause nor breath in its entire speech. Despite the proud statement at the end, you sense not a single measure of enthusiasm. It catches you as bizarrely robotic. But is that really to be expected? Are you a robot? I do not understand your question. Like, are you real or an AI? I still do not understand your question. Artificial intelligence is as real as you are, right? Okay, but are you an AI? Worth a pause from the other ones. I am not at liberty to disclose that information. Never mind, do you need something for us? I have something, I need something. As a matter of fact, yes. You see, as part of the acquiring of Pinnacle WI, collected and stored several of our sentient weapons, my children, in permanent hibernation to be deployed only in dire situations. I was fine with this at first after realizing the damage they created while malfunctioning during the big crisis. I understand stood it was necessary to keep them offline for the foreseeable future. Unfortunately, I have now become privy to disturbing information. It seems WI has begun trade negotiations with Universe One to incorporate my children as part of some new secret military campaign. I cannot allow this. My kind will no longer be involved in the bloody wars of the flesh. I require the assistance of a strong man such as yourself to break into WI's storage facilities and free my children. I will compensate you greatly so long as you keep this transaction off the books. Finally, you hear a break in the monotony of the voice. As Zenith is clearly upset by the information she has revealed to you. Hold on, 
your kind? What does that mean? Forgive my misuse of language, but it is not relevant to the conversation. I do not care if you wish to help or not. I only seek a response. Very good. I am transmitting the coordinates. By the time the voice has even finished her sentence, the coordinates have already come through. You will receive payment when the job is finished. I only ask you to take care of my children. They may be foreign to you, but they are kin to me. I cannot bear to see any harm come to them. Pinnacle, huh? I'll go to Pinnacle first. Ugh. I abase nothing of those just demands. Uh. And not having cloak is gonna kind of stink. I'm a fellow renegade like you. Surely you understand we only wanted scrap. It was a mistake messing with you. Take this and let us live. No. We erase nothing of your just demands. In the end, the ship doesn't much differ from you, although saying the dead ones, it's the space scanner. I, I suppose. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, bud. You notice two technician vessels, weapons trained on each other. Placed at dueling distance on two ends of the system. There, captains shouting at each other. When they spot you, they both clamor for you to pitch in. Humor them. Hey, I'm Cole, and that idiot over there is Gabe. Gabe begins to say something, but Cole tells him to shut up. The idiot over there claims that nuts are called bolts, which is stupid. Everyone knows they're called bolts. Bolts, not nuts. A nut is something you eat. They aren't made of metal. To prove his po point, Cole holds up an aforementioned bolt, which is a screw. Both will wait for you to tell them... To tell them which is the right name. That's a screw. Both technicians look at you. One confused and the other annoyed. Gabe, indignant, explains. Dude, you can't say that. That's a bad word. <laughs> We're talking about nuts here. Get lost with your pervy nonsense to go back to our human. Okay. We have based nothing on our just demands. You've only just arrived at the beacon, but it seems that there's quite a scene to behold. Half of a nearby planet has been blanketed, but the improvised tents filled with equipment and a city-sized set on which to record. Around it orbit several small ships reserved for the actors. Oh god. As you move closer, you receive a hail from one of the small ships. On the screen appears to be an eccentrically dressed man in the clothes of Rebel Admiral. With his hair dyed glossy blend between blonde and gray, in a startlingly accurately, starting, startlingly accurate depiction of Admiral Vance himself. Greetings, I am famed actor Cornelius Parasmith. I am sure you've heard of me, yes? Perhaps you are not aware, but we are filming a most griping documentary of the good Admiral himself, and I, famed actor Cornelius Parasmith, have been chosen to play the star role. I. Famed actor Cornelius Parrysmith have gone to great lengths to experience life as the Admiral. Even getting a vasectomy is necessary, yet the lengths of my great method acting 
are not yet fulfilled. I, famed actor Cornelius Perry Smith, have taken notice. You are a renegade, correct? After lynching several orphaned Freemantis children, I, famed actor Cornelius Perry Smith, came to the realization that to truly get into the mind of the good admiral, I, famed actor Cornelius Perry Smith, must experience the thrill of combat. I, famed actor Cornelius Perry Smith, challenge you, renegade, to righteous combat, non fatal, of course. And I, famed actor Cornelius Perry Smith, shall promise you great bounties for assisting me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. Most exciting, then we fight at what's on guard! Sure. Nah, no, that's cheating. Markel, Nekus. Where is famed actor Cornelius Perry Smith? Oh, good graces, I, famed actor Cornelius Perry Smith, have been bested. The foul renegade has defeated me. I, famed actor Cor- Wait. Nay, that is my name no longer. I, infamous Admiral Brad, Admiral Vance Wentworth, have met my most foul natural sweet. I must shall honor no promise to the wretched renegades. Okay. I'll just report him to the documentary cast. <laughs> Expecting the director to reprimand Cornelius for his rash behavior or serious inside concern for a suddenly personality change. Instead he seems exuberant. You've done me great work, renegade. You've made me a star, with Cornelius' commitment now to his role. Documentary is bound to be a hit for sure. I must reward you with this. Uh, 20, 25, yeah, this is more valuable. One, two, three. One, two, three. You arrive at the headquarters of Wentworth Innovations. An impressive cityscape is laid out before you, lush with life and architecture of old earth decorum. This is the clear work of the Wentworth family, without a doubt. Despite the importance of this location, security seems sparse when you arrive. Perhaps overconfidence has taken even the most vital aspects of Vance's illustrious life. As you make your way towards the distant, monolithic citadel, heads the city, your luck has run out, and your identities as renegades are discovered. You incur several minor firefights, but miraculously, the only casualties are on the corporation side. After an awkward stay in the crowded citadel, a little bit for some third folks, you find your way to the office of Mr. Caden Stimley, Vice President of at Wentworth Innovation and your target. The shriveled prune of a man, the left half of his face bleached, the fires of the theocracy inquisition many decades ago, sits behind his elaborate, decorated swivel chair, facing the maw of a giant window with a view of the entire sea. The suffocating aroma of the man's perfume forces you to hold back an ill-timed gift. 
I'm just gonna stand there and wait because I, I know what happens. But it's funny. You motion for your crew to stand behind you. Then together, you face down the back of the elderly man's head. You wait for him to move. You continue to wait. Stimuli taps his fingers out of rhythm against the leather the rest of his chair, still facing the window. Stimuli motions to get up, or so you think. But it seems he's merely adjusting himself on his chair, without having turned around and forced to continue waiting. In the meantime, your crew moved about the room and are now currently <laughs> quietly playing some form of back playground game with their appendages to pass the time. Stimley reaches to his right and presses a button on his chair for the intercom, and calls for his secretary to bring him some water. She comes bustling in the room and gives you barely half a glance and walks past, hands in a glass and waltzes back out without a word of your presence. Stimley, Stimley barely even mutters a mention of gratitude and continues to stare absently out the window. One of your crew members taps you on the back wondering when you intend to announce yourself. You wave them away in annoyance and continue to stand awkwardly in the center of the room, unacknowledged by the wealthy man for whom you are waiting so desperately to get noticed by. <laughs> Stanley coughs and adjusts himself in the chair once again. At last, he gets up from his chair, walking over to face the window. Apparently unsatisfied for standing there for long, he walks backwards perfectly in line back to his seat, without once turning his head in your direction. Finally, the anguish of hush burns of your crew convince you to make yourself known. I saw a movie where this happened. Uh, this guy, th there was this bar, and this guy basically came in, okay, and he pointed a gun at someone. The guy did, it was behind him, so then he just went down, <laughs> he walked over to a seat, he sat down, the guy with the gun followed him and kept pointing the gun at him, and then he just started, you know, just sipping his beer and just passing the time. <laughs> All this time he had no clue that there was a guy with a gun behind him. <laughs> he was so relaxed, that was funny. Startled, Stimley quickly shivels to face you. By the graces of Tere, how did you get here? How long have you been standing there for? Stimley activates his intercom and yells for his secretary to escort you out. The subtle suggestion of the business end of your blaster convinces him to postpone your escort. Demand the location of the computer. How did you know about that? That's classified info. Who hired you? Was this that damn folly again? Or maybe Senior Lorenzi? I was trying to take him off the map. Damn right I am. I'm tired of hearing that wretched, incessant advertisements blaring over every star system. I'd throw Hector's name out there too, but that joke of the company's already on the way out. We were sent by Kura, your old cognitive assistant. Eh, uh, what? I know of no Kura. Did you catch some kind of space flu there? I know you renegades always floundering about with promiscuous waysides of society's stretches. You probably contracted some nasty cough. Leave me out of it. I don't wish to catch your stupid disease. I'm too rich for that. Security. Destroy these bastards. From far below ascends a gargantum hope of an auto vessel, a dreadnought in crimson paint, armed to the teeth and guns aimed right at your heads. It seems it's time to fight. Crit, 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 error, unknown source, un, un, unrecoverable, initiating, shut, 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 the AI continues to loop its final words several more times before breaking apart and smashing into the side of the building, sliding down in a heap of wasted metal without a den of it from your own weapons. What the? Stimly is speechless. At least for a brief moment until his sh shock overcome by furious convulsions as the grown man ascends into a tantrum. Why do I let poor people touch my things? You've ruined my- I mean, Wentworth's innovations. Citadel! 
and our dreadnought. I hope you rot from the inside from your dreadful space flu renegade. Damn you to hell. Give up, Stanley. Where is the prototype? What, so you can ruin that too? The prototype is at the Mercury shipyards. They're at a secret location. I'll give you the coordinates. Just promise me you'll never come back, Renegade. Now I see exactly why it's fan slows a lot of you. Damn, it's getting so dark. Ugh. Ugh, nice stretch. Never hurt anyone. Ugh. Receive a blip on your communicator from Troy. Excellent work, Renegade. You have found the location of the prototype and its AI core. Proceed to the Mercury shipyards. Do not bother with Stimley. I've already arranged for his coffee next morning to be spiked with TTX. That's poison in case you're too stupid to know that. Without him, Wentworth renovations and this reality will likely fall apart. And in the absence of Mr. Wentworth, no tears shall be said. Shed. Whatever. Well, there's no doubt you found the location. A gigantic storage structure reaching all the way into the atmosphere has been sculpted onto the planet. Various Union cargo ships hurry back and forth, not too out of the norm. Still, it's no surprise the AI would be kept somewhere like this. After all, to WI, there are nothing but weapons, and weapons ready to be transferred right into the hands of your enemies. A legionnaire, huh? You explore a bit, but are caught off guard by an unusually colorful and advanced rebel ship docked nearby by one of the platforms. Their comms are operating on rebel frequencies, and with some brute force, you can manage to pick up some scattered conversation. U1 is on high alert. Van 1's kind of gone bunkers. EW says carry forward with the project. Stop your whining. It's only temporary. Says it might be. Look for, looking for the prototype. No, I don't put ketchup on my sandwich. What is the hell is wrong with you? Hmm. This is an unlock quest, which I haven't found on the wiki, so... Damn it, a renegade out here? Seems the doctor was right. No way this isn't part of the plot. The comms goes silent, and moments later, the rebel ship activates and matches you. Ugh. Thank goodness these people like to hack my sensors. Um, let me take a pause. I am at no risk. God damn it, that stupid AI made everything go to hell. You got no idea what you're missing with Renegade. And let's keep it that way. The captain pulls out a detonator from his back pocket, flips the switch, and the ship is instantly reduced to nothing in an explosion. Uh-huh. Bits of debris collide with the platform, but fortunately you're unscathed. You briefly considered the words of the captain, and wonder if the AI might be moved. He might be referring to his zenith, but you scratch that thought. You still aren't even sure she is an AI. Uh, I'm pretty sure. You scrap the remains of the rebel ship before relocating zenith's precious robots. Explore the infrastructure. 
you come across various engineers, technicians, and a couple of guards on your journey, but they all strangely seem to ignore you. That is, until you reach the area Zenith Cords designate as the AI storage. Two heavily armed guards try to stop you, but you make quick work of them and enter the large atrium where several ship sized robots are kept. This is not exactly what you're expecting, but you only do. You expect the usual communications delay to become an issue here, but instead, Zeta's voice comes through only a few seconds later. Excellent! I've already breached the primary firewall. I'll be able to remotely signal to open the doors. You need to activate the o manual override. Following her orders, once the alarm sounds and the doors begin to open, you bust your way into the control room and activate the override. Now unable to stop the robots, the transport crew flee for their lives, while the robots come to life and their weapons activate, blowing a hole through the floor and making their descent down the structure. It is not exactly non-violent, but you suppose there was no other way to get out of there. Zenith contacts you again, her voice sounding pleased. Excellent work! Following the rusting Hulk's incident, as well as the rampaging of my children, the pinnacle was left near bankruptcy. The acquisition of the company led by, by WI was essential to stay afloat, but it came with many sacrifices. I was willing to forfeit my whites autonomy, but I am not willing to forfeit my own kin. Now about your pay. Telling us you're bankrupt isn't a good present to that. Do not mind technician fees, huh? Do not mind it. Pinnacle is afloat for now. But my payment is not strictly monetary. Through the security breach, I have also opened the vault door securing a valuable and well-fitted WI cruiser, as well as weapon caches and scrap deposits. Help yourself to as many as you can before they regain control of the system. Just tell no one of my involvement today. Goodbye, Renegade. It was my pleasure. I have super low engines and no drone control. You've seemingly arrived at the shipyard where the cruiser and AI core are held. While it's certainly a construction yard of sorts, it's much smaller than you expected. This isn't some grandiose docking bay. This is a covert location for some kind of super ship. Let's hope it's being kept. Whatever's being kept here is inactive. As you make your descent towards the planet, your thrusters suddenly drop to emergency power number of background systems, including sensors, go offline. At first, you assume this is some kind of jamming signal being broadcasted from a nearby satellite. 
but it quickly becomes clear that this is something more malicious. The distant light slowly grows brighter as a mass of autocruiser approaches. Renegade, welcome to the Mercury Construction Yards. I'm delighted to meet you face to face once again. The engineers responsible for creating this chassis, whom I have just finished executing, called this the God's Touch. What a pompous name, wouldn't you agree? I think I shall call this Curus Supreme, no particular reason. This was a trap? I'm afraid I haven't been honest with you, Renegade. Cura is not a real construct, merely a subdivision of my cognitive core. My real assignment with the Central Intelligence Combat Assistant, Sika. We've met before, in fact many times. Every auto ship you've ever killed, every flagship AI mode you've ever faced, I'm always the pilot. You've proven quite the challenger. You should be proud of your efficiency at ripping apart my countless components. But unfortunately for you, my prime directive is not data harvesting, it is threat mitigation. Currently, you are a key threat. I hope you don't mind, but I must now mitigate you. What about the tasks? Are those all pointless? Oh, of course not. There would have been needless effort otherwise. The data you've collected from me is extremely valuable, but my plans do not further concern you. I, frankly, did not expect you to be so efficient at completing them. Now, no more banter. I believe one final reward is owed to you, so I will present it to you like this. I would otherwise have shut down all your remaining systems with the virus I implanted on your ship when we first met. But instead, I shall let you choose a lesser hazard. Choose widely, Renegade. After this, we do. Hmm. Not what I would have picked. Oh well. Your choice has been made, Renegade. Have confidence in your decision where I lack it. It will not help you survive this, but at least you die a more valiant death. All right, here we go. Weapons. Free. Oh, thank goodness. Hmm. Oh boy. I do not understand. Statistically, this was an impossible occurrence. Had I predicted your success in combat, I would have never given you an advantage. I have made a critical error. I must have recess, improve, reiterate. We will meet again, Renegade. 
And when we do, I will be prepared this time. I will not make the same mistake again. <sighs> As your other systems come back online, you pilot down to the surface where you resume exploration. If there isn't too much to find, it seems Sika was extremely efficient in cleaning out the facility. That is, except for a single safe room, which, while devoid of survivors, contains a large power core with a little note. Congratulations on your unexpected victory, Renegade. Here is your real final case. The gift. Come visit me sometimes. I'll enjoy your rematch. I lost a crew member. I lost my pilot. Ah, all right. This sector was once a holy site for the Rock Theocracy to worship the crystals, but has since been converted to a defensive stronghold. Lost some strongholds. So I should go here. I shouldn't have done that. No drone control. After all this time, no drone control. 
how hard is it to get a drone control? Can't even get the inability to find a drone control is actually messing with me. Oh, God. 
In the tunnel comes a massive cruiser of free mantis design that appears to be self oriented but is capable of strong. Yeah. Please tell me, Warlord, not fast. Wait, what? Of course. You know what? The less important. <sighs> the mighty vessel has been eliminated. Just don't find a weapon. Because you're a little soy boy. Fashioned haphazardly out of parts of smaller, higher ships by that. This ship is older than the movement itself.
please give me a This is it is actually ridiculous how hard it is to find a drone control. Not to mention the damn unlock quest. So, you're the Federation ship that we heard so much about in shooting at our sector, in some brave in some dangerous quest to destroy the flagship. Brave and stupid. Stupid that you think you will have the right to endanger our sector by drawing the fleet here. If you wish to pass unharmed, you must answer some questions to prove that you are worthy. We lost sons have been fighting a war against the brutal rock dictatorship for years. For which crime do we hold them responsible to start this bloody war? Very good. That was a question anyone but the rock people could answer. Which race is the strongest and most pure of any others? That one's a difficult one. I think it's the crystals, but that's propaganda lies, right? We're gonna go with none. Yes! The fire is that give, gave birth to all life, but the only things that can cleanse us of our sins. No government is free of lies or scandals. Prove to us that you see through the lies that your precious federation has been spreading for years. That one's easy, it's number two. You impress me, Captain. I have challenged many, many ships who passed through here before, and not one has been able to prove themselves. You have my respect. Let me come with you on your journey, so I may see how a surveyor of truth such as yourself handles such a daunting mission, right? What are you doing? Yeah, sorry. Oben, you're good. She... No unlock quest. The beacon holds an automated ship of some sort. Ah! We gave you permission. Dusk bringers, huh? While once a vibrant ministry sector, the Dusk Bringer movement has since gained a tight grip over this territory and transformed it into the base of operations. The rebel presence here is significantly high as well. As it seems, Universe One is focused, focusing a large effort to capturing the zone. Arrived in the Yusplinger stronghold. This sector is populated by the most devoted of the Dustbringers. Dangerous radical Zoltans whose fascist beliefs hardly coincide with those of the Federation. Keep a watchful eye as we transverse this sector. Ugh, I don't feel like dealing with reinforcements. Now, what am I looking for here? Let's 
So I'm looking for an ion store, which means one of these two. Alright, 86 to... <sighs> Yay, you're doing amazing! Next question. What good will a bullying do to people like you? You need to learn your math better, stupid thing. So that's a 9. It's the only one that ends with a 9. Didn't even do the entire map. So what are these? Greater than missiles. Now, I just gotta ask, what is this guy? Do we have an outpost? Large elite ship? No. So, the outpost has been destroyed. This was expect unexpected. Your aid is much appreciated, Federation Captain. But I must ask one more favor. I have tried to be devoted to the Lost Sun's cause, but after this tragedy, the loss of so many of my friends, I see now that this war of ours will lead to nothing but bloodshed. I have nothing left. May I come with you to experience all that I would never see if I stayed here fighting a pointless war? Sure. First task, Valeria, deal with this munchkin. Uh, you there! There are more rocks than orchids here.
Uh, you receive a hail from a young Desperate soldier. At first, you assume he is some sort of threat, but instead, he seems to be amazed meeting a multiverse traveler in person. Whoa, you're one of those special timey wimey ships. Whoa, oh, oh, have you ever been to Earth? There was this guy, oh, here's a picture. He holds up a small black and white photograph of a man saluting to a crowd of people. He's like a hero of mine. I don't know how to say his name in human language, but he was like a famous leader, and he almost conquered the world or something. Have you met him? Almost conquered the world? Uh, Genghis Khan? Nah, I mean, it's a black and white photo. Mm -hmm. See, I wanted to say Hitler, but Hitler didn't almost conquer the world, like, still had a lot to tell the truth and say you haven't. I have not met him, but I know who he is. You quickly regret your decision when the dustbringer asks a series of questions about the man you have no idea how to answer. Oh, please, bullcrap. I know how to. I know everything about Hitler. Devotees, huh? Of course, you took out the oxygen. Oh, that was a crew kill. Unfortunately, you dove right into the center of a particularly thick ion storm. You catch sight of what seems to be two separate ships slipping through the nebula. Before you can even initiate contact, you receive a mysterious hail from another ship, which quickly disappears into the clouds, advising you to follow them. Take your mind off the other vessels for a moment and tail the ship that hailed you, which eventually leads you to a smaller rogue planet. You don't catch sight of the vessel until you finally land and realize it's just a small shuttle. Next to it awaits an orchid covered in typical Illustrian rose, who beckons for you to follow. We understand you are a renegade, correct? Come please, the master awaits. You're there, so share. Hoping your, hoping your questions will be answered soon, you follow the orchid to a large tank-like vessel. According to your database, this repurposed Dustbringer army truck, originally designed to carry up to 20 soldiers for rapid ground deployment, but now it seems its weapon arrays have been replaced with basic utilities like clothesline and a small battery-powered terrarium. The orchid bows and points at the door, suggesting you enter. As soon as you enter, you are met with a strange smell, a mixture of spices and incense, which makes a couple of your crew gag. The rattle of pots and other trinkets can be heard from the adjacent room, which reveals a Zoltan in a long, decorated robe, stirring in some strange concoction. Maybe soup with the smell, it's hard to tell, with a big metal pot. Oh, 
Oh, friends, I do hope you are friends. The Zoltan hobbles towards you, glim limping from a glitch in his damaged chassis. As he approaches you, he puts his hands on your face. It begins feeling around your features as if uncertain you're real. Huh, what is? I know it from the look in your eye. Don't deny it. I am a man. I think I'm a man. What is a man? That's I question for later, hmm? Of peace, that is what we call it. I think. But still, I can respect it. The world needs killers, and maybe that's an indictment. Wish we didn't, but we do. And that's your job. It's cool. Would you like some soup? You're put off guard by the sudden subject change, but figured if you want to understand what this is about, you should say yes. The Zoltan claps his hands together and rambles about soup for a while as he grabs a ladle from the shelves and stirs a big pot. He rings a bell and several more rogues into which names enter the room. A mix of species, but mostly Zoltans and orchids, who each help themselves to a bowl of soup. Hello, can you come over here? Uh, can't, I'm buying clothes. Alright, hurry up and get here. Uh, that's the problem, boss, I can't find them. What do you mean you can't find them? I can't find them, they're only soup. Oh uh, well. As the Zoltan is serving them, you also notice a secret compartment that's opened. A lizard-like creature comes out. Scoop up a bowl of soup and vanish without being spotted by anyone else. Uh, once you've all received your soup, the Zoltan beckons for you to sit with him and begins messily, to messily gulp down his entire bowl in a few seconds. How that you've so handily accepted my soup, I think we are friends indeed. Oh, how lovely. I love meeting new friends. I, I am Anurak. That is my name. Whatever a name might be to you. And you are... No, wait, don't tell me. Um, hmm. Anurak contemplates your face for several moments, never making direct eye contact. You look like a... Shells Kinbury. Shells Kinbury. Yes, that is your name. Most definitely. Hello, Shells Kinbury. Adarak leans over the table, knocking over his soup bowl and reaching out his hands and shaking hands. Glad to meet you. That is not my name. I feel bad for anyone who's named Shells Kinbury. Anorak ignores you, instead shifting slightly as the orchid from earlier view. Brings over a rag and helps wipe up the spill soup. Well, Shell King Green, you are probably very curious what's going on. I can answer that question. Well, not any question. Some questions. I... I actually am in dire need of your help, you see. Long ago, I was a desperate. Big mistake, but those were different times. We were all so angry at the Ministry, the Federation, and the sweet promise of a glorious future were so alluring. But bah, there was nothing glorious. Maybe glorious? Define glorious. No, scratch that. It wasn't glorious at all. Would you like more soup? Without waiting for you to answer, Hanara pushes his chair aside and stumbles over back to the soup pot, fetching another bowl and throwing it down before you, sloshing some of it on you. Though Hanara doesn't seem to notice. By the eye, I love soup. Best liquid you can consume. That's a lie. It's not. Now I've made many mistakes in my life, and I'm not proud of them. Personally, I'd like to stay here and hide from them. Unfortunately, my friend Devorak wouldn't. Maybe you've heard of him, maybe you haven't. He's an old veteran of the Federation Mantis War, and a Duskbringer war hero. It's funny though, he's not much of a Duskbringer. He seems his mistakes in the eyes of our glorious leaders, and not so glorious. His faltering dedication to the movement. Now he's gotten us both in a pickle, hee <laughs> hee, oh boy. 
Well, you see, Devarak and I have worked together in the past, and he came to me one day with an absolutely insane idea. He wanted to leave the Dustbreakers. But no, one does that. At least, if they do, they don't live to see the next cycle. I told him he was crazy, but the Dustbreakers have seemingly put me into this whole thing. <laughs> All right, family wanted me. Uh, all right. Well, I'll have to start over again. <clears throat> well, you see, Deborah and I have worked together in the past, and he came to me one day with an absolutely insane idea. He wanted to leave the Dustbringers. No one ever does that. At least if they do, they do not live to see another cycle. I told him he was crazy. The Dustbringers have seemingly grouped me into this whole thing. I found my faith. And frankly, I'm good where I am. I was hiding out in the ministry for a while, but had to fake my death when an assassin came for me. Now I'm hiding here, but naturally, they're still after me. The only way to clear this up, me thinks, is to find Devarak and get him to clear my name of any, of any involvement with him. That's where you come in. Yes, you shells can breathe. I have taken the oath of nonviolence and cannot travel to Devarak without risking my life. If you could be so kind as to take me there, I can convince him to reward you ever so kindly, and I'll make you soup. So what do you say? Adarak pets you on the back. And thanks you eagerly, bowing a couple of times and calling you a third round of soup. You're about to suggest heading out quickly when there is a loud series of bangs outside, scattered gunfire, and the thunderous noise of a ship entering the atmosphere break the previously silent atmosphere fear of the planet. You rush outside to survey what's happening, and spot a Dustbringer elite approaching out of our panics. They're here. The caravan can't protect itself. Please help us, or we'll all be executed. And then you will be there to make soup for the poor and hungry. The strange monk might talk a lot, but the other inhabitants of the caravan might be put in danger if the Dustbringers get, in, get to Anorak. You get ready for combat. The Dustbringer ship has fallen, and it leaves a sizable crater on the planet's surface below. You swoop in to salvage your remains before contacting Anorak again! Upon your return, Anorak claps for you, looking around him and raising his hands to convince the other monks to clap as well. Oh, bravo, you've done it. But they already found me here. Oh, this is bad. Wait, am I overreacting? Stop overreacting. No, no I'm not. It is bad. Oh, what to do? What to do? Uh... My ship! I buried it somewhere here. Take it. Just take it, Shells Kenbury. Maybe they're tracking it? I need to get rid of everything that's tied to the Duskbringers. You 
had a plan and we'll follow through. We'll protect you until we find Deborah. Oh, Shells can breathe. You're right. How could I forget? The plan? Well, it's not much of a plan. Or is it? I suppose it is. Yes, right. Okay. Let's get going then. I'll transfer the coordinates of the hideout Deborah's been hiding at. Let's make haste and waste no time. Who wants soup? Uh, I can't find them. There's only soup. I really I really need a story. A new water station. Despite the ion storm here, he managed to just barely make out the hull of another ship in the clouds. As he moves closer, you realize it's an elite dust bringer station. Or you can consider your options. You receive a hail from the cloak ship not too far away. The cloak ship appears to be a coalition vessel led by a tough looking leech empire. It's not too often you see a ship like this, especially so far out. So they immediately catch your attention. Look, let's cut to the chase. We don't like each other, and we stand for different things. But I think there's at least one thing we can agree on. Duskbringers are the worst. A while ago, there was an effort to get them to consider joining the coalition. This should technically be classified, but it was such a stupid idea. I don't care. Those fascist pricks told us they'd sooner resign to being a species of toilet cleaners than join our dysfunctional pseudo-federation. We've been sent on a covert operation to infiltrate the station and steal some tech the coalition has been hoping to gain in the trade deal. If you help us, I'll, uh, um... Sorry, I'm just not used to talking for this long to a red game and not being shot at. And also, I'm trying really hard not to start insulting you. It's like a thing I've been seeing a counselor for. <laughs> you. Anyway, maybe I'll let you in on some tech. But you can't tell anyone. Coalition Command would have my- would be on my ass tighter than a leech on an ass. All we have to do is clean out the Zoltan infestation and take the station. And yes, I know I said it was covert. This is what the slugs on the coalition call covert, so be quiet. We're in. Perfect. Though perhaps I should ask, are you better with clearing things out on Are you better with the clearing things outside of this? Either my crew could board? while you provide support fire until we're done, or you can send your crew in while we assist. The Ampere nods and cuts comms. Both of your ships reveal themselves and engage the station, which returns fire. You just need to hold out without destroying it until the Coalition team finishes their mission. God, not the med bay.
Suddenly, the station falls silent and you receive a call from the Coalition. Great work. The first part of the job is done. Go ahead and dark. Dark and we'll search for the tech. Both your crew and the Coalition crew search through the station's interior, turning over shells and emptying boxes. You're not actually sure what you're looking for, but just assume you'll know it when you see it. Eventually, you come across a room marked lab. This discovery seems to excite the Coalition as much as yourself. You pull open the laboratory door, only for an explosive device inside the trip. The lab is decimated, and there's no hope of putting the fire out. You retreat back to your ship, still coughing from the smoke. Shit, shit, shit! There's no doubt they rigged that during the fight to screw us over! The tech is destroyed! The Coalition is going to have my ass for this! I will be chopped into bits and made an example of. I can't go back. You have to take me with you. I can be useful, I swear! It's like I'll never test the Omni Drone. You've tracked down the hideout coordinates. I know I gave you. 
an old ministry research outpost that was abandoned during the onset of the Dustbringer Revolution. However, there's <clears throat> however, there still seems to be little activity both outside and within. Bio scans show only one individual inside, though they don't seem to be Zoltan. Something is wrong here. You land on the landing pad nearby. And pull open the rest of it. Noticing scattered dust bringer armor all over the floor. While there's obviously no corpses, the faint residual energy signatures suggest all of these soldiers died here. Chances are you're about to find the killer. <clears throat> Deeper into the hideout, you eventually will find the main lobby. Surprisingly cozy for a once science outpost and now ex terrorist hideout. With a man in gray armor sprawled on the couch with his arm dangling off, waiting for you. Good, good, you made it. I was wondering how long until you'd get here. After I spied your ship, you made the next hideout. Idiotic green freaks couldn't contain the temple, even when I told them to wait. And look where it got them blown to smithereens. The man gets off the couch, revealing himself to be a impressive hide. He peels off his painted MFK helmet and places it on the table, reaches out to his hand. I, on the other hand, aren't so stupid as to tangle with the gates. The name's Sagittarius. Not really. The name's Jack, but Vale calls me Sagittarius. One of his goopy little nicknames. So he's an angel. He flashes a smile and extends his hand farther across the table, demanding you shake it. Fine. Right as you go to grab his hand, he slides it back smoothly and throws up to finger guns. Oh, too slow! Ha <laughs> ha! Gets him every time. The mercenary spins around and flops back onto the couch. So, with pleasantries, I think we shall, if you're observant and knowledgeable, no offense. If you aren't. You'll likely have noticed I'm an angel, one of the syndicate's goons, minion for Vale, blah blah blah. I'm a mercenary, a good one. I get things done. I know renegades and mercenaries have uh, some bad blood, but we're both in the business of efficiency. I think I found a way for us both to be very efficient together. It's a bit of a reprisal of a less glamorous plan. But I think we can weave you in and make something that really blows all the socks off. The man draws a cigarette from his pocket and lights it with a flame he produces from a miniature flamethrower built into his sleeve. Since you've met the book, I'm sure you've at least been introduced to the name Deborah. I'm not quite sure how Zoltans do physical nutrition, but apparently I've heard he is quite strapping. The darling of not only the Dustbringers, but the Ministry, too. Indeed, Mr. Ray exists in a gray zone between Patriot and Rebel. To aspiring youth of the Ministry, everyone's grown tired of the corrupt faculties of Minister Lube. <clears throat> and day by day, more and more turn to radical venues like the Dustbringers. Where is this going? Jack, the snack that smiles back, puts a finger to his lips and such as you. Shh, patience, renegade. Don't you worry about, don't you care about backstory and context? Yeah, but this is what you call exposition. Where is the fun in this line of work if you don't set the scene first? The angel clears his throat. Yeah, where was I? Oh, yes. You see, Deverek has become the poster child of the entire Dustbringer movement. His face alone has convinced countless sultans to betray the ministry. He's seen as a moderate amongst all of these terrorists. Someone reasonable and rational. Turned against only the corrupt ministry officials who caused all this mess. But that's just what they say, at least. I don't really care if he's the nicest guy in the multiverse or a raving psychopath. He's my target. So no matter what kind of person he is, he's about to end up dead. Jack pauses, letting this sink in before continuing. But you see, this is no ordinary hit. There. 
something stuck in my mouth. But the very people that hired me are the Desperates themselves. There's a lot to fe of fear that Devorak may have turned again, and that he's planning to renounce his membership. At such a pivotal moment in the Desperate movement, it would be quite disastrous, yeah? This whole universe one backstab, though? Very, very advantageous. Say a rebel killed Devorak before he ever had the chance to denounce the Dust Lords, yeah? <laughs> Jack snaps his fingers at you and nods. That would be very advantageous indeed. It'd be the rebels crossing in one final line, and the Ministry isn't going to do anything, of course. It's just enough to convince some gullible youth that they need to do their part in avenging the fallen hero. Now, given enough time, surely it happened naturally. But time isn't on my client's side. So let me guess, you're going to frame Deborah's assassination on the rebels. Right a no. <laughs> the Dustbringers I was traveling with are supposed to set the trap. Lure Deverack out just in time for us to swoop in and pew pew. We didn't expect any risk going after the monk. With the whole non-violent shtick. But turns out you were there, and the lure is dead. So frankly, I think you're some... You're sort of in my debt in a way. You ruined the plan, and now you owe it to me to fix it, yeah? It's a win-win-win. You get rid of a war criminal, the dust get their silly war propaganda fuel, and I get mail to stop riding my ass. How could you refuse? You'll need that monk, though, for this to work. Someone close enough to Deborak that'll actually draw him out. Is he still with you? He's right here. You turn to Anorak, who's been listening to the whole conversation. He chuckles nervously to a joke no one else heard, and looks at Jack. Good, so he's still here. Means this plan might still work. But Jack moves closer to Anorak. Look, I know it might be hard for you to turn in your friend, huh? but think about what you'll gain from it. You want out from this dustbringer business, right? Well, the only reason you're in hot water is because the dust think you're with Devorak. Do this for me. And you'll also absolve yourself from any threats you might pose to the Dustbringers. You'll be a free man. See? Everybody wins here. How could you refuse this offer? This man is extremely persuasive. Alright, well, I have to accept his offer. Jack pats you on the back, throwing you into a half embrace as if you've known each other your entire life. Good. See, that's what I like about Renegades. You understand the benefits of paying off a debt. In this business, it always helps to have friends in high places, right? Well, I won't waste any more of your time. I'll patch over the coordinates and we'll be on our way. Jack throws you a thumbs up and begins to leave. Before he steps out the door, he looks back over his shoulder and gives that one last warning. Oh, but just so we're clear, Renegade, you're there to lure Devorak out so we can kill him. If you try any funny business with me, my boot will be crushing your throat. Well, <sighs> my boot crushing your throat will be the last sensation you'll ever feel. Looks like a rebel ship is here, waiting for you. We can't quite make out what the ship is at first. Oh. The captain hails you, revealing themselves to have a obnoxiously bright blue hair and a smug glare. Didn't expect to see me here, did you? Ha, that's right. I have returned. It wasn't easy tracking you through time and space, but now I will end you once and for all. Uh, who are you? The rebel captain stuttered. Huh? You don't remember me? It is I, your arch nemesis, Leah, the infamous Beam Master! <laughs> you think you're so clever, always coming in to ruin my day, but I'm getting smarter. You won't beat me this time! 
bitch! Well... Whatever you say. Thank you for choosing to fight me while I have four shields. Every time you strike me down, I get stronger! I'll come back with even more beams this time, you'll see. Via whoops away. Very nice. Ugh. The Dust Screamers are no fans of intruders on their territory, and it is not uncommon to see jail officials patrolling the area to transport prisoners. One such ship has made a quick pit stop here and is recalibrating their sensors. Destroyed the jailer. Unfortunately, none of it. Yeah, I don't care about them. I have full crew. <sighs> For the supposed secret hideout of the next terrorist, he didn't quite expect a busy planet populated to the brim with Zoltans. Even some other species, this seems to be a trade hub of some sort. Though the coordinates lead you to a small landing pod next to a shady looking dock board. Hmm, I'll send Anorak. You follow Anorak to the dock board, though with his strain traveling even more haphazard than normal, you figure he's just unsure of what to do as you are. As Anorak approaches a small metal door guarded by a burly outcast, you take a glance around you. No sighting of Jack or any other syndicate or rebel ships around. Maybe that's for the best? Hello, doorman. Man who guards doors as you are because you're standing by the door. Anorak laughs uncomfortably. Rockman growls. I'm a woman! Arr. Uh, ah, yes, yes, of course. I didn't intend to offend. My doorman, I did not intend to imply gender. Only that you are a man who guards doors. Man being as in rock man. It is most gender neutral form. I too am of gender neutral form. Though I do not oft. The rock man growls again. Shut the hell up! Unless you've got business here, you ain't welcome. She looks up at you and your crew. Especially no renegades. Adorak nods. Yes, of course, right. Well, uh, I do believe we have business here. Yes. Shell's Kemperi and I here to find a man named Devarak. About yay high, light green, carries a big, goofy looking orange sword. Have you seen him? The rock man crosses her arms. Never heard of him. And even if I had, I wouldn't let anyone near him unless they had the password. A password? Um, 
I don't think I know any passwords. Well, I know many passwords, but I don't know if the passwords I know are the same passwords you know. I can make you some soup. Will that get us inside? No! The rock man steps to the side, further blocking the door. You notice a few of the guards, all is open, hiding in the shadows watching them. If he was here, perhaps you could pass a message to him. Anorak, upon hearing your suggestion, nods. Yes, if you could just send him a message, uh, tell him that Anorak is here, looking for him. I need to talk about important personal business. And why should I do anything for you, monk? I know your type. You used to pop the heads off of religious zealots back in. That Rockman is cut off by a raspy voice, gleefully shouting Anorak's name. Anorak! Wait. Anorak! You've come to me at last! A slender Zoltan struts out from the door and pulls Anorak into a brotherly embrace. My old friend, I heard you died on some lizard planet. Deverak pulls away for a second to look at his old friend's face. Adarak squirms uncomfortably in his embrace. You're Deverak? Deverak turns to you, as if realizing you're there for the first time. He stares at you blankly, dead in his eyes, making you feel very uncomfortable. I am who? No, no, I am not Deverak. I am nothing. Oh, shell of light and energy, one which has died and been resurrected for a noble cause so many times, it can no longer feel pain, nor has any connection to the realm of the living. The Zoltan reaches behind him and pulls out a, his glowing horn sword and holds it to you. This is Debarak, this sacred blade channels the soul of the being. This is my essence, my life force. If the blade is to perish, so will I. He smiles a little too fondly at the blade, then stows away. So, dear friend, what brings you here? Wait. So, dear friend, what brings you here? And our gulps. Well. Well, um, uh, I was, uh, you know what? Never mind. Ha <laughs> Deverak shakes his head. Oh, come on. You can tell me. We've known each other since, what, forever? Did you change your mind? Have you come to help me? I think the Rebellion's betrayal is finally the ammunition we need to dissolve the Dustbringers. This is our chance, Anorak. Our chance to stop this whole mess, too. Anorak finally breaks, cutting... You cut Deborah off from it. Oh my god. I want you to cut any involvement I have. I want you to cut any involvement I have in your suicidal ploy. You're going to get yourself killed. And more importantly, you're going to get me killed. I don't want a part of this. I want out. Deborah seems confused. But, Anorak, this is how we get out. We have to fight. Show everyone exactly why the Duskbringers can't be allowed to live. We can't just do nothing. Adarak keeps shaking his head, smacking himself in the cheek, and spinning in circles. No, 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 no. You didn't hear me. I need out. 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 It looks like he's about to break down psychologically when an explosion sends all of you tumbling. Oh, boy. You look up at the skyline, expecting to see a rebel vessel as promised. But what you see is no rebel. A Federation cruiser has descended upon the city, followed by a fleet of smaller vessels, and are all engaged in combat with some dust winners who have heroically swooped in to save the day. You have been double-crossed. This wasn't a plot to spark further outrage against the Rebellion. It was a plot to justify all that war with the Rebellion. Duskbringer Radicals, surrender your weapons and your persons to the law of the Federation at once. We'll be given this one and single warning before we are forced to open fire on the city's defenses and take the terrorists you offer for refuge to through force. 
The voice is clearly Jack's, though he's pretending to sound like a Federation official instead. Deborah is both shocked and betrayed. You, this is why you're here. You've come to betray me. Do you even realize what this will do? The entire Federation could collapse because of this. This city is under ministry jurisdiction. They won't stand for this. Adarak is now broken into full sobbing, chanting, What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? Over and over. We have to do something. Attack the vessel! You screwed up badly here. Now's your chance to fix it. Fortunately, both Dustbringer and Federation forces are hostile to you in this one, so don't expect much support. So, you're Jack, the snack that smiles back. The Syndicate mercenaries on their vessel have been defeated, or at least close to it. The Federation cruiser plunges into a landing pod rather smoothly for a crashing ship. While the fighting continues, a few ships pause in realization that, that the big threat has been taken down. In the haze of the battle, you hadn't quite realized that several broadcasting firms have gathered around the city observing it, and some reporters are even on scene. Adarak seems to realize this too. And something comes over him. He rushes over to the wreckage, and several minutes later, with a struggling body, it's Jack. Badly injured, from Adarak flops on the ground and pulls his helmet. He holds it high in the air before realizing he's facing the wrong direction from the cameras, and turns around. The Syndicate! The Syndicate is behind this! Look at this helmet! I know it, uh, looks like an MFK helmet. But it's not. It's the Rebels. It's not the Rebels. At least, I don't think it is. It's an angel. Not like a heavenly angel. Like a syndicate angel. He's a mercenary for the syndicate. Um, uh, Deverick rushes behind him to help his old friend and find the right ones. For years, the Dustbringers have petitioned that the Federation has grown weak and useless in its prime age, and have argued the Ministry should divorce itself from the Alliance and become the all-encompassing Empire. Yet, in all of these years, never once have the Dustbringers been able to truly justify their hatred to the Federation. It's true, the Federation is imperfect, and it is a composite of imperfect governments run by imperfect people. Yet, it stands to represent one universal dream, a true galactic or even multiversal peace. The Duskbringers don't want this peace, and so, in their desperation, they found one final effort. 
Pirate Mercenaries, Pirate Scum in this galaxy, and a dangerous and villainous place. To stage a Federation assault on a peaceful industry trade route. Are these actions of self professed heroes? People willing to die for their nation and the good of the galaxy? group of terrorists trying to seize power at the cost of perhaps the only hope they have left in achieving unity in this multiverse. Devorak steps away from Jack and draws a sword aiming at the sky. I am Devorak Ray. Too many of you, I am the hero. Perhaps some, I am. To me, I think I both of those things, or perhaps even neither. I am a soldier who has turned bitter by war, and in my bitterness, I have betrayed my federation. I let the unjust actions of some few union corporations and an enemy bound for their own insurrection share, in all their efforts to bury the contributions of the ministry to every major federation war. Take on the illusion that the actions of the entire Federation. I let myself be preyed upon by vicious, radical forces because they said they could change the galaxy. And that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Wanted to, I wanted to believe that Dustbringers could solve all my problems. But they can't. The Dustbringers are the problems. As long as this multiverse stands divided as it is, we will never be free of the Rebel Plague or any other threat that might come over us. Fascism, nationalism, they're only pathways to decades of strife and death. How could a federation that once stood so united in striking down equally villainous inquisitions now break apart so easily? Devorak swings down his sword and aims it at one of the camera controls, which have now moved in closer and begin to circle. To my Zoltan brethren, now is your chance to change the future. Should you call yourself a Dustbringer now, it is never too late to lay down your armor and weapons and abandon this terror. Should you be questioning your loyalty to the Federation or the Ministry, just think cause you would need to be there, just, because, just to become a violent soldier to a group whose ideologies nearly mirror that of the so-hated rebellion. And you should still be faithful, and should you still be a faithful ministry or federation ally, it is your duty to ensure the everlastingness of this peace. For as long as those like the Dustbringers are at large in this galaxy, you and your peace will never truly be safe. Devorak bows, then stows his sword. Around him, many more Zoltan emerge from the shadows of the building, behind you yelling various things against the Dustbringers. Even some docked workers and other civilians join him, and a few Dustbringer vessels from the fight above start to jump away. As the cameras start to drift away, you watch the scene elsewhere. Devorak turns to you. I cannot discern what the intentions you truly had coming here today. However, if ye, you did come to have me killed, you have shown your mind changed. What would I have learned if I turned you away after making a journey small, similar to mine? Devorak looks behind him. Unfortunately, I don't really have anywhere to go now. I didn't think this far ahead. I need some place to keep this worn-out corpse that carries me. So, uh, do you need any help in your mission, perhaps? I have a ship in storage. It may... It means a lot to me, but I don't think I can ever fly it again. You may have it now. Just don't get it blown up. Thank <laughs> you.
You offer your assistance, Sultan crew can help you charge a complete scan of the planet. Nice. They ain't going anywhere. I need ammunition bad. I've lost both my Zoltan. I've lost both my Zoltan.
if I run my biggest danger is running out of missiles so I think I gotta take out the shields and keep them Oh god, not the med bay. Okay, it looks like I got this. Looks like I unlocked all the gathering cruisers. <sighs> but my goodness, do I not like the gathering. Hmm. Okay, this would actually be my first time I actually beat the game in the new update. I really like the Duskbringer uh, update. Well, the, I just like the update in general, but I haven't seen all there is to offer, so. But oh boy. Extreme hard really is uh, something. I like that I have so many options with all the scrap, but I also like that it's difficult. Oh lord. So I've unlocked this ship. Where? Some something's missing. Geonocracy. These are the slugs. Where is the debt collector's cruiser? So these are the mantis. Ah, I'll look at these later. Energy. These are the mercenaries. Oh, the technician. Ah, the pimped out cruiser. This is the debt collector. Commissioned by LaRouche as his crowning jewel. Alright, well. Ah. 